Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to the video. Thanks for stopping by. This is a decent Fortnite gameplay from myself, so I wanted to put it on the internet. I didn't just want it to sit in my recordings folder and collect dust. I needed to share it with the world because I'm not very good at this game, but I did somewhat decent this game. So here this is. I hope you enjoy. I was going to act like I was commentating live, doing like a fake live commentary, which is more common than you would think, and I feel like I could do it pretty well, but... I'm kind of lazy, and it's not my style. I wasn't talking over the gameplay live. I was just recording and not talking. So I'll talk for you now. I had things I want to talk about and things that I would have forgot to say during the gameplay, so it's more convenient this way. I wanted to talk about my favorite landing location in Season 5. And, actually, before I get into that, maybe I should mention, just in general, Season 5 has kind of invigorated my interest in Fortnite. I really like the seasons in Fortnite. It's not that I was getting tired of Fortnite, although I kind of was. It's just that Season 5 has really opened me up to uh, possibilities of a better game and a, a continuously improving game for Fortnite. Uh, in particular, things I'm interested in are the Tommy Gun. The Tommy Gun has changed my life in Season 5 of Fortnite, and I really like this landing location. So, I guess we'll talk about the landing location first. People are calling this Viking Village. It doesn't have a name on the map. It's just a Viking house area set up on top of a mountain. And there's this big ballroom that looks like the Red Wedding setup from Game of Thrones. Have you seen that? I'm going towards it when I'm trying to kill this person. But it's a really cool area. And there's always rifts here because it's a new point of interest on the map. And the rifts are around the new points of interest on the map. So, wherever the storm is pushing you towards you can usually have a quick exit from this mountain or if you don't get a gun you can get a quick exit which is always nice and speaking of guns i really like this gun the tommy gun i'm i'm rocking a weird setup right here of, of just guns i found on the map the tommies and tacks uh, but the tommy gun is for noobs like me and it helps me to get kills i have gotten two solo wins in the last week which is really strange for me but it's mostly due to the Tommy gun. After they took out the double shotgun meta, which was so prevalent throughout the game, you felt like you had to automatically have two shotguns in your setup. That was kind of nerfed this season, obviously, by the delay between uh, shotgun shots. If you go pump to tack, there's a delay. If you go to pump to pump, there's a delay. Heavy to heavy, there's a delay. So the new meta for me is heavy to Tommy gun, or heavy to purple SMG is probably even better. But either one of those, you're doing pretty good. And I'm going to speed up the gameplay here because nothing really happens between this kill and the uh, the next kill. So you're going to have a couple of sped up parts here. But that's my favorite part of the game right now. Season 5, people have been asking me in my streams, how you feel about Season 5? What do you think about Season 5? Season 5 has really reinvigorated my interest in the game. And I know Fortnite, for some people, they're off the game. They don't, they don't want to play it anymore. They don't like the building aspects of the game. They're just kind of tired of it. And I totally understand I actually wish the lore was a little more clarified. I, I thought we were going to go back in time in Season 5, but it appears that worlds have collided. So there's elements of r real life, like the, the, the Drift guy is supposed to be somebody that is alive in 2018, but then there's also Vikings. So we're getting mixed signals. And then there's, like, the, the Drift is the first Battle Pass guy, and then there's Ragnarok, who looks like a demigod from... I don't know, 6 AD or what, whatever an old time date would be. Uh, so this is an, inter an interesting uh, lore going on in, in Season 5 that I can't really follow. But I, I think it's... and I'm, I mention that because I think it's a little important to understand the, the storyline of this game. I think it makes it unique from other Battle Royale games, and it's going to keep the interest up for fans of the game for a long time. I think that's really helped Overwatch. For everything Overwatch has done right and wrong, I think one of the things they've done really right is focus on the characters, and the characters all have backstories, so if you fall in love with a particular character, and you know their backstory, it just helps with your interest in the game. A uh, little standoff here in this, <laughs> in this section of the gameplay. Me and the guy in the tower across from me, and there's a tower on the other mountain, so... A little bit of a standoff here, and uh, you'll see how it ends up. But it's, you know, it happens a lot in Fortnite. This is maybe one of the things people uh, don't like about Fortnite. And I also don't like getting in build battles, mostly because I'm bad at it. Is that a reason to not like it? Don't like something because you're bad at it? Because if you don't like something because you're bad at it, maybe get better at it. But then 
it's also a stylistic thing. That's just not the style you want to play. You just want to shoot guns. You don't want to do Minecraft and then shoot guns. You just want to get to the shooting guns part. So I totally understand that. I really think Fortnite is going to be the most popular game for a while, though. Unless Red Dead Redemption 2 really surprises me, I can't see Fortnite... I guess it would... I mean, it would have to be a game that comes out of nowhere, kind of like Fortnite did, to knock off Fortnite. It's going to be popular for the rest of the summer. Summer is the most slow time for video games. This time last year, my friends and I were on Friday the 13th, almost every night. Friday the 13th, is a terrible game. <laughs> it is only fun and funny because of the glitches that would happen and the audio of the players that we would play with. It is a terrible, terrible game for gameplay, but the video moments in it were funny. Fortnite is a great game for gameplay, maybe a little more difficult for videos. You, you kind of have to have a plan of things to do and force certain things. Uh, but that's, you know, my opinion. I, uh, a lot of YouTube channels have really grown off the game and really know how to play the game better than me and <laughs> get more views because of that but i i enjoy the game still like i said and i really can't see anything knocking it off i'm looking forward to the black ops 4 beta coming out in august but i will be at a family reunion for the first weekend of the beta so hopefully i can catch one day and then maybe catch the second weekend i don't know i'm, I'm sick of talking about video games i'd like to know how you guys feel about season five of fortnite and how you feel about video games coming out for the rest of the year do you think fortnite is going to be dominant because i really do i can't see anything knocking this game off let's talk about my life so I put up a video about a month ago saying Megan and I were going to move into a new house. I just bought a house, my first house ever. I've been living in and out of apartments for the past six years now, since around 2012, 2013, with a little stretch in between of living at my parents' house. But ever since I started doing YouTube full-time, I can't live at my parents' house. They have a really nice house, but the internet is bad because they're out in the country a little bit. And it just made working on YouTube very hard. It's not just that the internet was bad. It's that it would go out for multiple days at a time. I wish I would have lived at my parents' house longer because I could have saved more money. But I also like living on my own because you learn a lot more about yourself when you live on your own. You learn how to cook and clean and do all those important life skills. So Megan and I have been living in this townhome for three, three years now. Yeah, about three years since we got married. And we bought our first home. We were really excited. It's a scary thing. It's something I've had a lot of anxiety about, especially right when we got the call that we were able to, uh, that we, you know, we put in an offer and then we got the call, hey, your offer got accepted. And it was like, what? People actually accept those? <laughs> I, I thought we were just putting that in for fun. Wait, 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 how much, how much do we owe for the house? Oh, oh my God. That's, you never purchase anything more expensive in your life. So there's a lot of anxiety around that time. But now, that anxiety about a month later has turned into excitement and I'm ready to move into the home I feel there's a lot of things we'll need for the home there's a lot of things yet to do this is going to be a very busy week we finally have a closing date people who watch my streams have been saying Joel when's your closing date we're going to be closing later this week barring any catastrophic changes or I don't know I get hit I get in a car accident on the way to the closing date or something terrible but it seems like we're going to close later this week and move in this weekend so I'm going to move for the first time in three years. I haven't moved in three years after moving almost every year for three years before that. So we've been in the same place for a while and I'm gonna remember how terrible packing up all of your things and putting them in a truck is. That'll be fun, but once we get into the house, it'll be nice. It's also nice that today is Amazon Prime Day, so we got the, the Prime deals going on for things that we need like curtains and all of, the th all of the things you don't think about. There's a lot of stuff that we need to fill out a home. We're living in a smaller space now and moving into a much larger space. So hopefully I can get enough videos up on the channel for July. July's been terrible for CPMs on YouTube anyway. I I've posted infrequently in July. I'm looking forward to October being a huge month on my channel for scary games plus Call of Duty plus Red Dead Redemption 2. It's everything I love in October. August, I'd also like to do a lot. Even though there's not a lot of video games coming out in the next month, like I said, summer is slow for video games, I think August would just be a good month for me to to really pump content out and really put out things that I think people will enjoy. I have music to make that I've been putting off. Once we get settled in a house, I feel like it'll be a lot easier to do those things I've been putting off. Or maybe I'm just saying that, you know, I'm a, I'm a procrastinator, so... Not the best, uh, not the best method of work to have if you want to be a successful YouTuber. But I just wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on season five of Fortnite 
and a little bit of a life update for those of you who would watch that far into the video and uh, still care about something like that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. You enjoyed the update. Hopefully I get into a house this weekend. I probably will. Going to be some videos up on my channel uh, in the next week about maybe about house stuff. I don't know. I'm probably not going to do a house tour, at least initially, because that's a little weird to me. I get paranoid about showing that stuff, but you'll definitely see me in new rooms in a new location. So look forward to that. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.